Hi everybody, Mushroom Matt here, and this episode is the long-anticipated mushroom episode. I've been waiting a long time to get this one out there. So, we're going to be going out in the forest and going to go check out a bunch of really cool mushrooms. Um, check out some of their characteristics, their toxicity, um, maybe even talk about some mimics that you can find out there. So, um, mushrooms, there are three different types of mushrooms that we're going to be finding out here. The first one are your classic toadstools. They're the ones with the cap on the top, the gills facing down. They're also called basidios. The second one are cup fungus. They frequently associate with trees and are decomposers. Their sporing structures actually face upwards. Um, and the last one that we're going to be talking about are water molds or the zygo mycotas. Um, we should be able to find all three of these different types of mushrooms out here. Now mushrooms have two main uh, roles in the ecosystem. The first one is called mycorrhizal fungus. So basically underneath your feet are whole networks of fungal roots called hyphae that all connect to each other. They associate with 96% of all plants, so almost every single plant in some way is being helped by a mushroom. Now the mushrooms do things like break down nutrients, they search for nutrients by, st by sticking their hyphae out further than a lot of trees can get their roots, um, and they're also able to um, communicate different resource needs. Uh, and trees can also use them to communicate uh, plant pathogens. So if you think about like um, Dutch elm disease, trees were actually able to communicate the disease from one to the other through the roots of these fungi, and those are called mycorrhizal fungus. The mycorrhizal fungi are the ones that are not going to be attached to um, dead trees or rocks. They're going to be not decomposing the things that are around them, but rather searching out in the soil for nutrients. The second type are called saprobic mushrooms or decomposers. Those are the guys that are going to be on live trees, dead trees, and they're going to be breaking down um, the substrate or the material that they are on. Um, mushrooms have a really cool type of digestion. It's actually the opposite of what we do. We ingest, we digest, we absorb, and we excrete. Mushrooms first excrete their digestive enzymes. They decompose outside of the mushroom itself. And then they absorb all of those nutrients back in at the end. It's really, really cool. So let's go check it out. One of the tools that's really important to be bringing out with you as you're going mushroom hunting is going to be a field guide. Um, not only are you going to be able to tell exactly what species you're finding out there, but this is what's going to tell you what's toxic and what's not, what's safe to handle and what isn't. Um, so it's going to be something that's really important when you're going out there. So this mushroom is called a false turkey tail mushroom. They are a shelf fungus that are breaking down this dead wood here. The way that you can tell the difference between turkey tail and false turkey tail is the green color down towards the base, and the reason it gets its name is because they look like turkey tails. So this is a really cool mushroom. When a mushroom is first growing it put and pushes through the ground, it's what's called a button. And it's called a button because the cap hasn't completely opened yet, so the gills and the spores are still on the inside of this mushroom. Um, this mushroom is most likely an amanita. I can't exactly tell for the way it is right now until it completely opens up, because the way that you can tell if an amanita is an amanita is it has what's called a veil. Um, and so when that cap opens up, it's actually going to leave a little bit of that um, button around the stem of it, um, and that is what's called the veil. Um, the other way that you can tell if an amanita is an amanita is at the base of it, underground, is something called the volvox. And that is a, um, just a, the base of it's actually circular rather than um, being sort of flat and, and stooling out the way that a lot of other mushrooms do. Now, amanitas are very toxic. This mushroom is most likely very toxic, so amanitas are one of the ones you don't even want to touch. Um, you just want to leave them be. This here is another Amanita, and this one is incredibly toxic as well. This is called the Destroying Angel Fungus. Really cool name. Um, the way that you can tell if it's a Destroying Angel Fungus is they're going to be one of the smaller Amanitas, and they frequently grow just solely. Um, they're frequently the only mushroom that's around. Um, this is a mycorrhizal fungus, so that means that this um, mushroom is connected to a whole network of fungus that help feed all of the plants around here. They help the trees communicate. It's really part of a very cool fungal network, but like I said, very dangerous fungus. This is another really cool mushroom. This is a cup mushroom, so this is in the second family of mushrooms that I talked about earlier. So this is actually called a yellow-tipped coral. Um, it's always great to have your guide with you. I couldn't quite tell exactly what type of coral fungus it was, but what gives it away is that white film that's down at the bottom. Now this fungus is also poisonous, so we're not going to want to touch this one either. This is a rust fungus here. They're plant pathogens. They frequently have a number of different types of spores and have multiple hosts. So this one, um, the rust is actually eating the leaf for nutrients and it creates its spores off of the bottom of the leaf. 
This mushroom here is a foliota. It's really cool because you've got all three stages of growth. You've got the button down here. You've got one just as it's opening and you've got a uh, three mature ones over here that have completely opened. Now this is a non-edible mushroom. It's also not poisonous, but it has a lot of look-alikes that are poisonous. So this is another one that you're just gonna wanna leave where it is. The next one that we've come across is powdery mildew. Powdery mildew is a mold, so it's gonna be in the zygo family. They have little tails that they use to swim through moisture molecules in the air. That's how they spread their spores. Uh, powdery mildew grows on small, low-lying, herby plants and are also a great source of protein for our gopher tortoises. Mushrooms like cold, damp environments, which makes today a perfect day to go out mushroom hunting. We've had a lot of recent rain, there's a lot of cloud coverage, and it's not particularly hot out. Now, mushrooms can come in all shapes and sizes. Like this little guy right here, he's completely mature and is sporing, all the way up to larger ones like this mushroom here. Now, mushrooms are super important in the ecosystem. They decompose things, they tie all of the plants and trees together into one network, and I personally believe that they're going to save the world. But scientists are currently working on mushrooms that can break down plastic, ones that can clean up oil spills. They have protein options that are non-animal that are made out of mushrooms. Um, you can make leather out of mushrooms. You can make packaging materials, packaging peanuts out of mushrooms. They are, they've got a wide range of uses. And of course, medicine, penicillin, amoxicillin, all of those classic antibiotics, all of those compounds came from mushrooms as well. So I think that there is a huge future for sustainability in mushrooms as we move forward in a, this greener way of thinking.